Okay, you guys have no idea how much fucking fuss I've gone through just to set up this camera. It hasn't got a flap, so I have to kind of balance a mirror behind the camera so I can actually see I'm in the right place. <laughs> but anyway, so I'm going to be talking about tarantula husbandry for all you newbie tarantula owners out there. I own an Arizona Blonde Tarantula. Actually, I should probably say his Latin name and I'll sound really smart. My tarantula is an Arizona Blonde Tarantula or Desert Blonde. Um, if you're really smart, you can say the Latin name, which is... A phono pel machalcos. A phono mel... A phono mel <laughs> <A fomomel -cachalcos. laughs> A desert spider, okay? One more time. A phono pelma chalcos. There we go, I said it. <laughs> yeah, I'm smart. I know what I'm on about. <laughs> so basically, A phono pelma chalcos. He is a new world tarantula, which is highly recommended for beginners as they tend to be the more docile tarantulas. Not all of them, but most of them tend to be docile. I'll put some examples of really docile tarantulas. Now, um, when I say these breeds are docile, you're gonna get one who's a bit of an ass, if it, even though it's meant to be docile. So bear in mind, when you're purchasing a tarantula, you might be one of that. You might be one of those unlucky few who get a really bad-tempered rose hair or Arizona black. Arizona black. <laughs> Brazilian black. I know what I'm on about, okay? <laughs> so be aware that tarantulas do have different personalities. New world tarantulas normally have urticating hairs as their defense mechanisms. Um, and their venom is a lot less potent. Doesn't mean it won't hurt, it's just it won't make you as ill as an old world tarantula's venom would. You should be aware of what you're allergic to because if you're allergic to tarantula venom you could possibly die so be aware of what you're allergic to. If Chances are if you're allergic to bee stings or any kind of insect sting you're probably going to be allergic to a tarantula bite so just be aware that that could happen if you get bitten. A nasty allergic reaction. When you get more advanced in tarantula husbandry with more experience you can move on to old world tarantulas which tend to have more potent venom they tend to be a lot faster um and most of them are really they're beautiful they've got purples blues they're they're more of looking tarantulas not handling tarantulas like new world tarantulas so yeah old world new world most new world tarantulas tend to have this uh, very similar care requirements as in substrate, humidity, um, all that kind of jazz. So I'm going to show you what I use for peanut. So my Arizona Blonde is a ground dweller, so he has a horizontal enclosure. So it's more wide than long, as he doesn't need to climb, he walks on the ground. And for his bedding, I use Spider Life. There we go. It's basically kind of like a soily coconut fiber substrate. Um, originally, I did put kind of I mixed this in with sand because Arizona isn't really this muddy. <laughs> but um, I've put I just put in this substrate and he seems to enjoy that a lot better as he can mould it a lot easier if he so chooses to dig. <laughs> um, he was in the molting process and he was digging like crazy trying to make his house so I would recommend kind of this kind of substrate. Obviously it's your tarantula, you choose what's best but my opinion is this substrate. Humidity for an Arizona blonde. Um, I really don't pay attention to that because it's not necessary for his breed. Temperature wise, I tend to keep him to 24 to 28 centigrees, um, maybe a little bit lower. Um, for a tarantula, it's 
it's best for it to be a little bit cooler than it is hotter because tarantulas can dehydrate very easily um, but the Arizona Blonde is quite a hardy tarantula so even if the temperature does go a little lower than it should be he will be fine <laughs> um, but even so if the temperature does get a, a little bit too low I have got a portable radiator in my room which will heat up the whole room which brings me to the subject of heat mats and heat lamps don't use them um, they're more for lizards um, because lizards like to like keep their bellies warm whereas a tarantula and a heat mat and a hot spot that could probably burn them or dehydrate them so try and stay away from those try and heat up your whole room with a portable radiator I know heating is expensive but you don't have to keep it on for long maybe like 15 minutes 10 minutes just you know keep an eye on the tarantula's uh, temperature Speaking of dehydration, make sure your tarantula's water is topped up at all times. If you're in England, I would not recommend using tap water as there's chlorine in tap water. Um, rainwater? As long as there's no insects or obviously little worms swimming in the water. I personally use I use boiled kettled water that's cooled down, cooled right down, um, as that kills any lingering germs and it's pure pure water so that's what I use for watering my tarantula <laughs> food um, sometimes your tarantula will just not eat for a relatively long time don't get stressed out or worried um, your tarantula will eat he won't starve to death um, but normally I feed peanut maybe one or two locusts a week um, if a tarantula stops eating that's normally a sign of pre-molt um, as I need to save that energy to actually get out of their husk, of their shell. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, do not leave live prey items unattended with your tarantula because, well, especially crickets and locusts have jaws and I know locusts can draw blood on human skin. Imagine what it can do to a tarantula. The tarantula's blood doesn't clot so if your tarantula gets a cut it could possibly bleed to death if unattended now handling a very <laughs> controversial subject in the tarantula community you're gonna get people saying you should not handle your tarantula full stop and you get people who obviously handle their tarantula and they're like yeah it's fine I'm with handling it obviously depends on your tarantula if he wants to be handled don't be sticking your hand in a old world tarantula's enclosure and expecting it to be tolerable because chances are it will bite you be aware of the tarantula's body language what is it saying to you do research of, of on tarantula body language like if it's flicking urticating hairs a threat posture running away those are signs, leave me alone, I don't want to be handled. But my tarantula is very docile. I read his body language, I've never gotten bitten. I always have a panic box close to me and I can easily catch him and put him back into his enclosure. There's also safety with handling. Tarantulas are delicate, they're not toys. If you're handling a tarantula, make sure it's close to the ground because if it makes a bolt, runs off your hand, and falls to the ground it could most likely most likely rupture its abdomen and die but be aware of be aware of what could happen you could get bitten your tarantula could run away and rupture its abdomen these are just could so just be aware of the safety precautions so our next subject is molting so what is a sign a tarantula is going to go into molt um Normally, a long-term sign, they'll get a random light bald patch in the middle of their abdomen. Um, Peanut had this for a long time, maybe a few months before molting. Another sign is they will stop eating. Um, maybe sometimes they will eat something if it's been a while, but most of the time they just stop eating. Very, very obvious sign, Very, again, very close to pre-mal. They will barricade their hide hides exits 
uh, with webbing and they just won't come out. Peanut was in pea melt for two months. He did not leave his hide for two months. I was worried. Keep an eye on the tarantula's abdomen. If it's becoming deflated and wrinkled, that's a very ill tarantula, that's not good. But if it's in pre-melt and the adamant's really large and bulgy and just a big abdomen, sign of pre-melt. <laughs> and what can you do when a tarantula's molting? Just wish for the best. Make sure there's always water in the tarantula's enclosure. Um, there's nothing you can do when a tarantula is in pre-molt. It's a natural cycle for a tarantula. And if you keep the molt, you can sex your tarantula. If you know if you know what you're looking for, it's very easy. So Arizona blonde, males tend to be darker, longer black legs. Females tend to have a larger abdomen, bulkier, lighter. It can be obvious with, on, with the way they look if they're male or female, but some aren't that easy. So there you go. You can sex a tarantula by its malt and it's not that hard. I've done it myself and I will show you how I did it. <laughs> hey guys. So my tarantula peanut has finally molted. Um, he's been in this hide for about two months and a day after my birthday, which was the 21st of April, he molted and he's perfectly fine, he's very dark now and I don't actually know what uh, gender he is so it's quite exciting to uh, finally find out because you can decipher what um, end they are by their molt and I'm going to very gently take away his web and try and take out his molt um, it's been like two days, he's on this side, yeah He's just uh, probably going to crawl out the other side of the hide. Hopefully I won't scare him too much. <laughs> oh my god, he's very angry. Oh, he's not happy. Here's the malt in all its glory. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to soak this in some warm water with a little bit of, a little bit of soap um, which should make it a little easier to handle because it's very dry and crusty right now. And then uh, hopefully I can look at the abdomen, inside the abdomen and I should be able to decipher whether he's a male or female. I, th I reckon he's a male, which will be quite sad because males do not live as long as females. Um, in the past, uh, Peanut has never flicked heads at me or shown a threat posture, obviously at this state. Um, it's, it's understandable because his exoskeleton hasn't hardened, so he's very vulnerable right now. But yeah, let's soak this up. There we go, I've got my malt here and my warm water. I've never done this before, so hopefully I don't ruin this, his malt. I want to keep this. So yeah. Wow. Oh, this used to be peanut. Look at the fangs. Pop that in. I really hope I'm doing this right. I've literally watched loads of YouTubers and they all say I just like soak it in water with a little bit of soap, which is what I've done. Oh wow, his fangs. Teddy, stop eating the dog's food. Okay, um, right, we're gonna take this out now. I think that's nice and soap soaked. Oh my god, it's so delicate. Okay. Oh wow, wow, it's, wow! 
This is insane. You can see everything. I'm annoyed his leg came off. Wow, look at this. Okay, we're gonna try and find what we're looking for. Very delicate. Can I turn this around? I need to find the lungs. We're looking for the tarantula's lungs. Oh, shit. I need to use my fingers. It's gonna be really gross. Okay, I'm gonna wash my hands after, okay? Here we go, oh, here we go, here we go. Oh, book lock, yes! Right, finally, that was very, very hard. Okay, I think these are the book lungs. This is what we're looking for. Right, we've got book lungs now. And what I'm looking for is a flap. Uh, yeah, there we go. Right. Oh, thank goodness, you found what we look for. Book lungs. Um, I don't see a flap. Oh, I think we have a little boy. Okay. Here we go. Right, you can see, I'll get a video to compare it to, the book lungs and the two front ones, there's meant to be a flap here which would indicate he's a female but there's no flap. So I believe Peanut is a male and judging from the coloration um, he is now, I'm not surprised. So I have a male. I'm going to keep the malt in a container. Um, I've just put loads of tissues around it so it can dry properly, but yeah, just going to keep it nice and safe for memory purposes. But yeah, um, I'll do it properly when I turn off the camera, but I'm going to put the lid on and label it. So yeah, um, exciting stuff. I'm, so yeah, that's, yeah, thanks for watching. <laughs> Um, and I actually have a friend in Malaysia who has two old world tarantulas um, and he will show you them now. <laughs> Where am I? Oh, hi guys. <laughs> Alright, so thank you to Jody for putting me in her video, I suppose. So, my name is Jeremy. I'm going to show you guys, all of my tarantulas. I'm gonna talk about them, talk about their care requirements. So, yeah, let's get to it. All right, so the next tarantula is actually uh, an old world. And the thing is, with old worlds, they make me nervous. I will explain why later. And this one, this species of old world tarantula is famous for being one of the angriest of its kind. This... <laughs> this is the uh, orange baboon tarantula. And you can as you, as you can see, it lays down a lot of webbing. Look at that. It's, it's everywhere. Now, webbing in tarantula forms, or in the terms of uh, tarantula, they're not used to catch food, no. Well, not completely. Basically, help the tarantula feel vibrations on the ground. If I make this little vibration, like if a bug's just on it, it will pick up those vibrations and it basically... It's basically a dinner bell for the tarantula. Now, orange baboon tarantulas... are known to be aggressive. And this is mainly because they don't have as many defenses as most other tarantulas. I will explain a little bit more later. But there it is. As you can you can actually see that it has a very it has a very nice design on its abdomen. You can see that it has a fishbone styled um, abdomen. One long line, little quote unquote bones 
Going down. Oh. I think it's gotten mad. Underneath its feet is where the true uh, defense comes in. They have uh, hairs in the bottom of their feet that help them climb and scale surfaces. But for tarantulas mainly, if... Well, they have uh, what's called structural coloring on their, these hairs. So what happens is, you shine a light like this uh, at the spider, it and it will raise its legs, change color, quote-unquote change color, uh, from black to almost rainbow colors. You can see that it gets blue and light blue, almost green, and gray, sort of. It's got... It's basically shining all the colors of the rainbow. Because they're baboon spiders, or baboon tarantulas, they're from Africa. All baboon tarantulas are from Africa. And this means that I keep them kind of dry, like this, until they get into a mold. So yeah, that's the orange baboon tarantula. This one is not only one of my most beautiful, but also one of the scariest tarantulas in my collection, and I, <laughs> this one is actually a, what I like to nickname a unicorn spider, um, but its real name is the East African Horned Baboon Spider. You can actually see the bum, the oh god, you can actually see the uh, little horn on the top of its head. No one actually really knows what it's for, but, uh, it's cool. <laughs> that's the only, that's the only logical explanation I can think of. It's cool, that's it. Because it's a baboon spider as well, it's also from Africa, and I keep it in a really, uh, well, not really dry or arid environment. I mean, I do nest enclosure as well, just not as much as other tarantula enclosures. And this one, as you can also notice, it does make quite a bit of silk. Um, and just like the OBT, the Orange Baboon Tarantula, it uses this silk to notify, to notify the spider that it's gotten food at its doorstep. There, you can also see the horn there on the top. And just like the OBT as well, these baboon spiders are very similar to each other. It also has that, uh, the fish bone design on its abdomen. This and uh, the orange baboon tarantula, uh, they are smaller. They're probably the smallest in my collection because these will only get five inches. The rest is six, six and a half, maybe eight inches long already. Um, but yeah, they're not to be the biggest uh, tarantulas in the world. Yeah, that's the uh, rear horn baboon spider, also known as uh, Ceratogyrus darlingi in Latin. And I guess that's it for my part of uh, Jody's project. Thank you again for um, inviting me on <laughs> to uh, helping you with your project. Because I'm actually stoked to see the results of this project. So, yeah. Bye. Hi, thanks for watching, uh, this is the end of the video. Thanks again to Jeremy for helping me out with my project. And this video was very unscripted, but I hope it was helpful either way. So yeah, thanks for watching and I hope you liked it. <laughs>